Welcome to my online diary in which I will document some interesting events as they unfold. Interesting that is for those who care about freedom of thought and speech and how one particular religious organisation, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, otherwise the LDS or Mormon Church, seeks to suppress those rights of its members. I'm making this record for the benefit of anyone who wishes to understand this process, but especially for others who, in due course, may find themselves in a similar position to me. I hope my diary will be of value and support to you. My name is Chris Ralph, and it's currently the 2nd of June 2016. I was an English convert to the LDS Church 45 years ago, and it appears that I'm now on the Church's hit list of whistleblowers, a number of whom have been expelled through its disciplinary procedures over the last two years. Church leaders are apparently concerned that in sharing my insights, other members may also become aware of significant problems with the LDS founding claims. I won't deny that after discovering what the Church had been hiding from me for all of my years of membership, I expressed some thoughts and feelings on my blog. Before doing so, however, I had tried to obtain reasonable explanations from local leaders and it soon became clear that they could not provide any useful answers and were themselves not aware of some of the enormous problems. In my quest for truth, I then wrote letters to the Europe Area Presidency, the Quorum of Twelve Apostles and the First Presidency, or in other words, the full-time professional clergy or general authorities of the Church. To this day, I have not received an acknowledgement or response from any one of them. Now, a little over two years ago, I was named at the instigation of a district judge as one of two prospective witnesses in a private criminal action brought by Tom Phillips alleging fraud against LDS Church President Thomas S. Monson. That, of course, attracted media attention for a while and placed me, or my name at least, briefly in the public eye. A church spokesman attempted to downplay the resulting summons, claiming that the other witness and I were both ex-members, which was entirely untrue. As a current church member, I had also published a public apology to blacks back in 2012. That was my unilateral attempt to apologise for toxic racist attitudes, which to my shame I had accepted unquestioningly in my early years of church membership. I only went public with my apology because despite 125 years of institutional racism, the Church had never formally expressed any regret for that teaching. Now I know that in the minds of some, having done all of that makes me an arch-villain, although, rather to my surprise, apparently in some circles I'm also considered something of a minor hero for having had the courage to speak out. Actually, of course, it had never been my intention to become either a villain or a hero, the truth is I'm quite an ordinary, even quite a shy person who has just tried repeatedly to find sensible answers to some troubling questions. I do so because the honest answers, whatever they may be, impact profoundly on how life should be lived. And I wish to make something very clear. I'm not doing this to be difficult just for the sake of being difficult. I'm doing it because these questions really matter and I really care. I have a long history of what is termed faithful service in the church. I've served on bishoprics for much of my church life, as an elders quorum president and high priest group leader several times, and also on the state high council for six years, among other callings. I've not been just a lukewarm peripheral kind of member drifting in and out of activities that suited me. I threw my lot in with Mormonism and joined when I was 18 years old, back in 1971, so my commitment has been long, my investment has been substantial and my concerns are all entirely genuine. And the cost of doggedly pursuing truth has been high in terms of loss of former social status. It has taken a great deal of study, the exercise of real faith, true humility, constant painful heart searching and not a little courage as well. It has at no stage been an easy option to speak out, but for me it has been the only choice that leaves my integrity intact. Didn't I promise as a Latter-day Saint always to stand for truth and righteousness, both in private and in public? Didn't I also vow repeatedly to be honest in all of my dealings? I recall I was taught once upon a time that Mormonism encompassed all truth and that truth would always support good and right. You see... My pioneering hunger for answers, the same hunger which led me into Mormonism all those years ago, is still at the very core of who I am. 
I cannot now turn that driving force off because deeper underlying truth has become inconvenient to modern LDS leaders. As I have reviewed the actual history and found it at odds with the sanitised version taught in church, I have had to admit to my conscience, initially in a state of great anguish I might say, that much as I desired otherwise, the facts simply could not support the cherished LDS world view upon which I had founded my whole adult life. This process of finding out is sometimes referred to in the church as losing one's testimony. But that is such a gross misrepresentation. It is surely self-evident that to lose a belief in something which is demonstrably false is of far greater worth to the soul in its quest for knowledge than continuing to wrap oneself up in comfortable and familiar falsehoods which do nothing at all to advance understanding. I would far sooner be friendless on a lifelong journey in pursuit of truth than surrounded constantly by fair weather friends wasting time together in accomplishing nothing real. And here is the real crux of the whole matter. None of us has the ability to change one moment of history. I haven't, and you haven't, and even the highest church leaders haven't, though I'm sure some of them do their best to try. History is there whether or not we are ready to acknowledge it. All that each of us has is the prerogative to make a choice between accepting the whole history as it really is and adjusting our worldview accordingly, or trying to live the rest of our lives under a futile and possibly dangerous pretense. Back in 1971, when I was investigating the church, I was encouraged to question. But such an attitude really doesn't sit well at all with 21st century leaders who lack answers. Even so, the questions are valid, and will never go away until they are answered honestly. Leaders surely know that. However, being unable to rid themselves of the questions, they are doing the next best thing and are systematically removing people like me who keep asking them. Sadly, that is the game plan being acted out within the LDS Church in 2016. Here is an excerpt from a letter I recently received from my state president just a month ago. He says, As your state president, I have become increasingly concerned about your actions during the past three years in the context of my sacred responsibility to ensure that no error or apostasy comes into the church. With this in mind, I am writing to inquire whether you would like to avail yourself of the opportunity to have your name removed from the records of the church. If you make such a request, I am bound to honour it, resulting in the simple administrative removal of your name. Please let me know your desires in this regard. It's pretty clear, I think, he would welcome my resignation. Perhaps he believes it would spare me additional anguish. Perhaps he thinks it would make his own life easier. But inviting resignation seems a bit extreme after 45 years, doesn't it? when all I have actually done is pose some honest questions in the expectation of participating in some sensible dialogue. Surely my questions presented the church with a golden opportunity to shine as a beacon before the world by responding to them with inspired answers. But apparently not. No answers, no dialogue, just an invitation to resign. So to leave or not to leave... That is the question the state president wants me to answer, though he won't answer any of mine. He is a decent person, though, and so I have told him I will discuss it with family members and will then answer him. I will also, of course, report my decision here. Thank you to those who have offered their moral support. For those who maybe cannot, for various reasons, please just try to empathise a little, because this very same situation may also arise one day soon, with your offspring, with your siblings, your friends, or perhaps even with you yourself, and then you will have to see through different eyes. It is the history which is the problem, not those questioning it. Those of us who dare to do that are merely messengers who herald the need for greater transparency and change. We are calling the leaders to account, if you like. And if that offends you, then just consider this. Perhaps there is a real need. Until the next time... Take courage, don't be afraid to question anything, and remember that ultimately truth is the only genuine freedom.